Today, we're gonna win test fence because we're not gonna show you how to build it. We're gonna show you how it gets ruined. And here to help us with that is John. Florida Fence Pros. And now you have an airboat because of why? Our family has an airboat tour operation just south of Orlando. Check out his airboat tour company. But right now, what we're excited about is we wanna knock down some fence. What this video is about is how much wind it takes to ruin a fence built on four x four posts. Will it snap? Will the ground give way? We don't know. There's no data on this. We will be the only data you'll ever find on this subject. This is it. Let's do it. I'm ready. One, two, three, let's blow. Wah! So the first fence we're gonna test is a horizontal treated pine privacy fence. And these are five quarter boards spaced a half inch apart. We don't expect that that is gonna make a huge difference on the wind load rating of this particular fence. And it is on four by four posts. So there's two feet of post in the ground, which is very common and not one bag of concrete, but concrete bottom to top. And that's probably two 60 pound bags of concrete, which is highly unusual for here in Florida. The point of doing that is because we don't want the concrete to fail. I want to see if we set these posts correctly, if the wood can withstand the wind. We already know if you don't use enough concrete and it's not good enough and you don't do it right, then the fence will lean. But that's not what we're testing here today. We want to see if this thing will snap off. I hope it does. Oh, oh. No it's move. true, nothing moved. Well, this... We got a little bit of movement. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, so we got, you see that? That middle post, and that's because all that wind's directed right there at the middle post. So as we've seen on all the other fences that we've tested, but if this is a long run of fence, it'd be all the middle posts. All the middle posts would be more blown out. So what we're gonna do now, just like the rest of them, we're gonna kick some rudder in, give it a couple little wind direction changes with full RPM and see if that makes a difference at all. Because it's that action, I think, when it becomes inflexible that can make things snap. I have actually seen these fence posts snap off in Wyoming due to wind. I kind of hope that happens because I don't want to have to take this down. She's leaning. She's leaning. They're all leaning about the same then. She's wiggling a good bit. Concrete's all snapped. I mean, this is all brand new fresh wood though. I mean, you're gonna have a hard time getting it to fail. It's usually a few years down the road after it's sat out there in the elements and- At least in our area, now in Florida, it's always wet. But after it's started to rot and stuff, that's when we're gonna see those posts snapping. And the drier it is in our area, we get really dry wood. And as it dries out, then it gets more brittle. And then when you have those things where it's flexing, it just falls over. Cedar is a lot weaker. I think we could probably snap off a cedar post, no problem. But obviously the big drawback to the treated posts is they're even gonna rot. A treated post here in Florida, realistically, probably gonna get about 10 years out of them. Other things we're noticing is, is because we use such a small hole, the concrete's broken. I think that's why this post here is moving, I think, but I'm not 100% positive. Uh, if this post was set maybe three feet deep instead of two feet deep, it probably would not be wiggling quite this bad. This also goes to methods of construction and the way you go about installing your fence really matters when you start taking wind into account. I'd say it was a small hole, but to us, small hole's nine inches. That's a nine inch hole. Yeah. Substantially bigger than a lot of the holes you see. Yeah. You know, a lot of the holes you see is just a post hole digger width. Which is six. Like six, about maybe six seven. Inches. Which means the corners of your concrete break out the minute anything hits it. It breaks right on the corner because you have a thin layer of concrete and it's just not that strong. So it's still in there, but this is why fences lean. And again, we use way more concrete, twice as much as what most people are using here in Florida. It's one 60 pound bag and we ended up using two. So it didn't blow over though. It didn't, and I'm, I'm disappointed. This is anticlimactic. I want something to break. Oh, hey, can we take a minute and talk about our sponsor today? Our sponsor today is Banana Levels. You've probably heard of Empire or Johnson, Banana Levels. Banana levels, when you need to make sure that it's plumb, and maybe you didn't do such a good job of setting your post, I guarantee you with a banana level, you'll be able to find plumb somewhere on this level. When you've screwed up and you need to prove to somebody that you didn't, banana levels. Hey, we haven't turned on the blow yet. 
Wait, it's over here. Hey, so what we're gonna do with this one, this is a standard six foot stockade set almost exactly like that one. The only difference is it's six inches further in the ground. So we have a two and a half foot set depth and it's stockade. So the pickets are a little bit lighter. It has rails for the horizontal member instead of the boards. We'll see if that makes any difference whatsoever. Let's blow. I got max. We got max wind. The, definitely move that center post. Yeah, that's a, that's a failure there. The concrete's just not good enough. If we could keep the concrete from flexing and keep everything rigid, but just like a skyscraper sways, we always say that the strongest isn't always something that's perfectly rigid. Something needs to sway a little bit and have a little bit of give. And the post base failing is actually helping the fence, not helping it stay straight, but it's helping it from snapping off. If we had a perfectly rigid concrete cylinder that couldn't move, I think we'd see these posts potentially fail and gusts of wind, you know, hitting it from different directions. Right now, the, the four x four posts are, they're standing up, but they're gonna need some fixing after a big strong wind, that's for sure. No way around that. I feel like that thing is so close to snapping. Like, just snap already. Just snap. I need a sawzall blade. If your sand wasn't there, and if you're, I think if the ground conditions were like Wyoming, it'd snap. It'd snap. If it didn't, if there wasn't any give here, this thing would be gone. The problem is, is the soil's given away, and that's making it flex. And the concrete broke. If this thing was rigid, that thing would, because man, it's moving so much. That thing would be gone. I just know it'd be gone. So hey, we got your back. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna simulate a little bit of rot. This thing needs to leave the chat. Needs to end up over there. Hey, you got some of that rapid rot? I need some rapid rot right here. We're gonna call this three years of weed eating and decay. So what we're cutting is about from the tip to about here. So you're losing about an inch of really good post all the way around. The other thing that's making this fence a little bit stronger is the fact that we do have 16 foot boards here. There's no splice in the middle and each one of these boards is actually adding strength to this fence as opposed to a six foot stockade where we don't have that. Each one of those boards is making this fence stronger and I hate that for it. This, this right here, this, this, you see this? This is what the problem was. There's so much moisture. All those fibers pulled out from up inside the post. Wet wood is super, super strong. Let this dry out and then it's gone. I wish we had some dry stuff. Maybe on the next one, we'll test some super dry stuff and we can figure out how to make some wind in Wyoming where the climate's drier to show what happens to fences in Wyoming. But for right now, four by fours are pretty tough until they start to rot. That's what I'd say. We don't always get the results we're looking for or we expect, but we're gonna show you exactly what happened. So this is what it took to break this fence. It was still incredibly strong. So now we get to see on the next video how strong it is when you use a four x four metal replacement post instead of this so we can combat the rot. Because if we can beat the rot and we can beat the concrete problems, then you've got something. If you missed or would like to see more videos where we wind test vinyl fences, check out this video right over here. Or if you'd like to learn more about a wood post replacement, that is engineered steel, check out one of these videos right over here. I'm Mark Olson with SWI Fence Florida, and we hope you have a good dang day.